Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you the recap of a 2020 American movie titled The Banker. Spoiler alert, watch out and take care. In 1965, Washington DC, in a court proceeding about a bank, Bernard Garrett set out to testify. Before his testimony, his friend told him to be careful as the court set an example out of him. Bernard entered the court to testify and a flashback was shown. In 1939, in Texas, young Bernard was a shoe shiner. He was a genius and he had an interest in real estate. Whenever he was shining the shoes of the white agents, he would listen to their conversation on real estate and jot it down. Other times, he would climb to the white men's office to eavesdrop on their business conversation. One day, his father caught him and checked his jotter. He saw all his son had jotted down and all he had learned. He told him he couldn't be an agent in a country dominated by white people. He told his father he could travel to another state. Years later, Bernard was married to Eunice, and they had a son named Bernard Jr. They left Texas for California. Upon arriving in Eunice's uncle's home, Eunice's uncle tried to ask him to get a job at the airport to support his family, but he insisted he travels down to check his hands-on real estate. The next morning, he drove his cousin to his workplace, where he met his cousin's friend, Matt. Immediately after he left there, he went to check all the houses for sale and called the house owners to find out if there's any of them that he could buy. He eventually found a house owned by Mr. Barker. Later that evening, he took Eunice to the house and told her that he had just enough money to buy the house and won't be left with so much to renovate. Eunice asked him if it would be better if they got an investor and she took him to find him an investor. She took him to a plantation club she worked at to meet Joe, the club's owner. Upon arriving at the club, he saw how Joe was hugging his wife and making unpleasant jokes. So he got angry and left the club. Eunice followed him to the car and told him Joe was just a funny person. He insisted he wouldn't be a partner or an investor to Joe and he would find another means. The next day, he went to Mr. Barker and asked Mr. Barker to lend him money to buy his house and he would pay back with interest. Mr. Barker said he doesn't do business like that, so he can't help. Before Bernard left Mr. Barker's office, he saw a bank award given to Barker. He visited Midbank to meet with the bank manager, Mr. Reed. Upon entering the bank, everyone looked at him and wondered why a black man was in the bank. Despite seeing Mr. Reed in front of him, the white secretary told him he couldn't meet Mr. Reed. He left the bank and waited outside the bank for him. He finally met with Mr. Reed and tried to get a loan using Mr. Barker's name. Mr. Reed refused to give him a loan, so he left. He returned home and Eunice begged him to find another home to buy. He received a call from Mr. Barker, who asked him if he attempted to get a loan using his name. He said yes and said he knew it was going against the normal business standard, but if he had followed the normal business standard all his life, then he would be in Texas shining shoes. Barker loved his courage, so he stood in as his guarantor to get the loan. Later, Eunice and Bernard went to Joe's club. In the club, Joe went to Bernard and assured him he was not having sex with his wife. They both went out to talk, and they sorted out their issues. Having bought Barker's home, Bernard began renovation with his cousin, and he employed Matt, a white boy, to work with him. During the construction, he received a visit from the police. They told him a tenant reported him for imposing the owner. He showed his deeds to the police to tell them that he rightfully bought the house, and he is indeed the owner. He eventually finished renovating, parked into the home with his wife, and leased out the home. Mr. Barker was amazed by his work. He told him he had another building and asked if Bernard would be interested in a partnership with him. Bernard became partners with Mr. Barker on the condition that they would share the gains 50-50, but Mr. Barker's name would be on all the homes. He worked tirelessly till he was considered rich. Unfortunately for him, one day Mrs. Barker woke her husband up to no avail. Mr. Barker was dead. After the death of Mr. Barker, Mrs. Barker came to him with a lawyer and asked to buy all his shares at a considerably low rate. Mrs. Barker said she shouldn't continue doing business with a black man, and if Bernard didn't take the offer, she would take him to court. The lawyer told Bernard that the only way to prove Mr. Barker's intention, since it was only Mr. Barker's name that was on the document, was to get a witness. The only witness was Mr. Reed, who was already Mrs. Barker's banker. Bernard visited Mr. Reed, but Mr. Reed refused to meet with him. He went to Joe and asked him to be his partner, so that they could buy the Barker's building. Joe laughed at him and told him that Barker's building was in the center of an all-white city and there was no way they would buy it. They needed a white spokesperson, so Bernard contacted Matt. Matt said he knew nothing about real estate and rejected the offer. After rejecting the offer, he went to a restaurant where he met an old school mate, Susie, and told her about the offer. 
he went back and accepted the offer. Joe asked them to meet him at a field next day by 6 a.m. The next morning, Joe got there and told Matt that if he wanted to act as their spokesperson, he must know how to play golf. Joe taught Matt golf while Bernard taught Matt mathematics. As time went on, Matt was good. He was good at numbers and also at golf. Joe got Matt an exclusive membership at a golf field where he met the owner of the Barker's building. Matt was to negotiate and sign the contract. Before Matt went there, Bernard had trained him on the numbers and made him memorize all the necessary numbers. He arrived at the bank owner's office. He blew his mind completely off. He eventually sold the building off at less than $1,600,000. They all celebrated that night and Joe and Bernard were excited to know how the Barkers would feel. The next day, Joe and Bernard went to the Barkers building as the new owners, and the bankers were shocked. Over time, Joe and Bernard became rich in real estate. One day, Bernard visited his father in Texas. That night, his father told him how proud he was and wished him well. The next day, Bernard went out with his son and checked Texas. He looked at the bank where he always stayed to shine shoes when he was little. Getting back to California, he met with Joe and asked that they buy the bank. Joe insisted he had no idea about a bank, and Texas was a white-dominated state. Bernard suggested that Matt stand as a forerunner and spokesperson. Joe refused the deal and told him it would be a bad idea, but Bernard insisted. He told Joe that if he won't be his partner, he would have to get another partner. Joe eventually agreed to be his partner. They all visit Texas to buy the mainland bank. With Matt as a spokesperson, they bought the bank with Robert Flores working with Matt in signing off loans. The agreement with Matt was that he would give daily reports to Bernard. Bernard went into the black neighborhood and offered them loans to build their business. They scrapped off the No Negroes clause and signed off loans for Negroes. Florence later learned about the excess loans and queried Matt. He tailed Matt till Matt met with Bernard, and he took their picture. One day when Matt, Joe, and Bernard were discussing, Rob came into their home to inform them the people would know a black man owned the bank. Getting back home that day, Matt met his wife Susie, the same girl he met the first time he took the job. Susie told him he should lead on his own so they would be placed chairs, not salary. Matt promised his wife that he would co-own their next bank, which would happen soon. Trying to redeem the promise he made to his wife, he asked Joe and Bernard to buy another bank he would control on his own. Bernard insisted that this was a bad idea, but Matt told him he would resign and return to California if he wasn't allowed. They allowed him to control a bank and Eunice worked in that bank as a cleaner, so she would oversee whatever he did. They ordered him to use a lawyer they knew about, and they taught him to do it well. One day, Matt was visited by the banking department to check his loans. Bernard had to work as a janitor in the bank to help him out, but the officer closed the door. The officer realized that Matt signed off loans with about 25 years limit, and they threatened to close his bank. Matt returned to brief Joe and Bernard and they wondered why their lawyer didn't get to know the deficiencies. But Matt told them he used another lawyer recommended to him by Florence, and it was Florence who deceived him. There was no way to save Matt's bank, so Bernard asked Matt to concentrate on the mainland bank. At home, Joe received a call from his banker, who told him he got a call from the comptroller's office that Matt had paid the loan at his bank with the funds from the mainland bank. Joe and Bernard drove to the mainland bank immediately and asked Matt to change the ledger. Before he could, the agents from the Treasury Comptroller's office arrived, and Matt was arrested for fraud. In front of the bank, FBI agents arrived to arrest Joe and Matt. They were to face a panel, and a senator was interested in using them to change law. The senator called Matt and asked them to testify that Joe and Bernard were the ones who deceived them and defraud the people. It was either that, or he would be imprisoned for 50 years. Matt took the deal. In the court, Matt testified as he planned. At the same time, Bernard testified about the segregation of the blacks. Following the proceeding, all of Joe and Bernard's property was taken by the federal government, and they also faced imprisonment while Matt wasn't charged. The day they were released, Eunice came to welcome them, and Bernard told her they had a property that hadn't been taken. The night before Matt's testimony, Matt called Bernard to meet with him, and he apologized to Bernard. That day, Bernard asked Matt to buy the properties. An ending note at the end of the movie told the viewers that three years after Bernard's testimony, the government enacted a law that invalidated segregation based on race and color. Thank you for watching the recap. Please subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post the next recap.